Hello, let's continue our Sudoku adventure with Thermos by Randall. So we have normal 6x6 six six Sudoku rules, meaning in every row, every column, and every 2x3 box. We are placing the digits 1 to 6, exactly once each. We also have thermometers in the grid. Thermometers strictly increase from the bulb end. The bulb is the circle. So if this was, say, a 3, this would have to be bigger than 3. It doesn't have to be 4, but it could be. It could be a 5. Um, and then this needs to be strictly bigger than 5, so it would be forced to be 6 in this case. But we could also do 3, 4, 6. We could do 3, 4, 5. We could go 2, 5, 6. You know, you get it. Just They have to get bigger. We can't do 2, 5, 4, because 4 is not bigger than 5. Even though 4 is bigger than 2, we have to keep getting bigger as we move along. All right, and then we also have these black dots in the grid. These are crop key dots, uh, specifically the ratio ones. And so digits separated by a black dot have a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning one of them is exactly double the other. So if this was a 2, this could be 1, because 2 is double 1, or it could be a 4, because 4 is double 2. And that's it. Those are the rules. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself. And I'm going to get started right now. Okay, let's start with these long ones, and especially this one here that's on a black dot. Because if you think about it, if we start this with a 1, we're forced to put a 2 here. Because 2 is the only digit we can put with a 1 on a black dot. So 2 still gets removed from here, making this minimum 3, 4, 5. But 5 can't be on a black dot at all. If 5 was on a black dot, then we would have to put 2.5 with it, or 10 neither of which are viable digits. So even starting with one, we end up with a six, which means increasing these can't possibly help this one. So um, basically the one and the two are used up in this cell because it's either a one and that uses up the two next to it, which prevents this from being two, or it's a two, which still prevents that from being two. Either way, that forces this to be minimum three, four. And either way, that means this can't be five, so it has to be six. We get our first digit, that's a six, and that does place a three here. Now I noticed we had made this a three. And now it can't be 1, 2, or 3. It's minimum 4, so that actually fills out 4 or 5 like that. Let me, let me explain that a little bit better, because I, I, mean, I may be jumping um, ahead a bit. right? Because I explained that this, is, this uses up 1 and 2, or higher. right? But if it's higher, that's even worse. So if this was a 1, this ends up 2. And now this has to be a 3 or higher, because 1 and 2 are used up. But it can't be 3 either because there's a 3 in the row, so this ends up being 4 or 5. If this ends up any higher than 1, that doesn't help us, right? That doesn't help us add more digits as possibilities here. So this is 4 and 5, and then, then this is 1 or 2. I guess this is 1, 2, or 3. We don't really know. Um, we do know, however, that we need a 6 in one of these two cells. If this is the 6, that ends up 3. That seems reasonable. If this is the 6, one of these is 3. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. This is, this is a really cool black dot thing, especially in 6x6s, six where we have natural roping, right? These three digits here, I'm going to make them green. Where do the green digits go in this box? Well, they can't repeat in this row, but all three of them have to be in the box, so they end up down here. And that's just always just true of every 6x6 six six when you go horizontally on these standard boxes. So... These three digits then end up down here, and that's why we call it roping, because you're kind of like weaving a rope. Um, it comes from 9x9, nine nine where it's a little bit more interesting and doesn't always happen, but can happen. Anyway, we need to put a 3 and a 6 down here. If the 3 ends up on the black dot, that only goes with the 6. If a 6 ends up with a black dot on the black dot, that only goes with a 3. We know that we can't squeeze both the 3 and 6 in this cell, so if either a 3 or a 6 must end up on this black dot, which then puts the other one on the black dot. We know the order because we can't put a 6 on the thermobulb, so that's 3, that's 6. There you go. So we got our digits there. Um, let's see if we can do something similar here. Now this doesn't use up the 1 uh, this doesn't use up the 1 and the 2. This could be a 1, making that a 2. So the minimum we could do is 1, 2, 3, 4. And so I'm just going to pencil this out. The 4 can go up to 5, uh, but it can't be a 6. The 3 can go up to 4, but it can't be a 5. The 2 can go up to 3, but it can't be a 4. And 1 can go up to 2, but it can't be a 3. So this could be 1, 2, 3, 4. It could be 2, 3, 4, 5. It could be any combination of those, as long as we keep getting bigger. This black dot, though, so it can't have a 3 on it, which means it also can't have a 6 on it. So our options are 1, 2, 4, because you can never put a 5 on a black dot. So it doesn't have 3, 5, or 6. So it's 1, 2, 4. And so that means it's either 1, 2, or 2, 4, which always uses up the 2. 
So there is a two in one of these two cells. So the question is, where does six go in this box? So this six sees here, it can't be on the black dot because it would have to go with the three, which it can't. This is not six because it's not at the end of the thermo, and so this is the six. These two sixes look up, putting a six over here. Do we want to ask about fives? Well, five is in one of these two. That points up along with this five, making this a hidden five, six pair. That is quite limiting on this cell here, which now can't be five, six. So this is maximum four, making this max three, making this max two. But remember, this uses up the one and the two, no matter what. Unless this is, unless this is three or higher, putting a one here uses up the two there, or we're putting a two there. But it can't be three or higher, because remember, this, this caps at four. So this uses up the one, two, making this the three, and then this has to be four, because it can't be five, six. And that tells us this is two, one, and then that this is three. That places the two onto here. Can go with a one or a four. This is the other one, four. This is one, four, five. It's not a one. So the one is placed in the box. Yes, that makes sense. This one looks in, and it can't be at the tip of this thermo. So that's one and four. OK. Just give me a moment. What are the consequences here? Um, the biggest consequence here is this can't be a one now, so it has to be a two just by the thermo. That places a one here because it can't be four. Okay, that places the one here. These two ones look in. This is our two. This is a one. This is a two. Just finishing the column. Just doing Sudoku now. We need a one and three. That's the one. That's the three. We know this is a five, six pair for the column. In general, we need four, five, six here. That's not six. Here we need a two. That goes here. And we need a five. That can't be five. We finished with four, six. This can't be six. So the column for the column, that's four, that's six. Gives us the five and the four, the five and the six, five and four here. That's a six. These two digits are a three and a five, and we're done. That was neat, Randall, um, how the thermos kind of interacted with each other. So this thermo really forced this thermo, which then, because of this black dot and Sudoku, forced this thermo to finish which then finished this thermo completely. That was really interesting how they kind of bounced around. Really nice use of this, these black dots here as well, and the roping from this black dot. So every black dot had a really interesting purpose to the solve path. Really well crafted, Randall. I really enjoyed that. Hope you did too. And if you did, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below. Mm -hmm.